I'm going to show you how to create a program using a tool called Scratch. So that you can create the program along with me, pause this video whenever it asks you to and repeat the steps on your computer. Here is how your finished project will look. To start any Scratch program, click on the green flag. When I click the green flag, I see my tacks are blinking. And if I click on one of the tacks, a volcano appears and I see a fact about that volcano. If I click on a different tack, I'll see a fact about that volcano. And while you're writing your project, you're going to put in better facts than what are displaying here. To stop any program in Scratch, click on the red stop sign. To get you started, we created a blank project that has all the pictures that you'll need to get started. Ask your teacher how to get there. Once you're on the blank project, you're going to click on See Inside. And what See Inside does is it lets you see the programming logic that's in someone's Scratch program. It's a great way to learn computer programming by looking at someone else's project and clicking on See Inside. Now that we're inside our program, if you see in the upper right that it says Sign In, you should click on that and put in your username and password. Ask your teacher what your username and password should be. If it doesn't say sign in like it does now, I'm already logged in and I'm ready to go. The next thing you're going to do, very important step, you need to click the remix button. And it says under here, if I hover over it, what remix does. It saves a copy of this project that's just for me. So I click on remix, click on OK. And now it's creating a copy of the project for me. The next step is to give it a name. I'm going to go ahead and select with my mouse, or you can also backspace with your keyboard. And I'm going to type in the name of my program. I'm going to call it Kim's Volcanoes. You should name it after your first name. Don't use your last name. But if there are multiple Kims in your grade or you share a first name with other kids in your grade at your school, you can go ahead and put in your last initial. Now that I have my project named, I'm going to click on File, Save Now. So now I have saved my project up to the Scratch website and I'm ready to get started. A little bit about Scratch, uh, there is a stage in Scratch and there are sprites. And the sprites are anything that go on the stage. So they could be people or animals or a drum. And in this case, our sprites are the four tacks that are going to represent our volcanoes. We've already loaded the world map to your stage as a backdrop. So the things that sprites can do are up here on these tabs. And when I click on a sprite down here in my sprites pane, then these three tabs apply to that sprite. And the things a sprite can do are up here. It can have a script that makes it do something, turn or move or say something. It can have a costume or several costumes. And what a sprite can do is it can change its costume and then it'll look a different way in your program. And it can play sounds. And before you can add a sound to your script, you have to add it here on the Sounds tab. If you have time at the end of your class period, you are welcome to add sounds to your project, either when you click the tack or you can play a song the whole time your program is running. To do that, you can click on here to choose a sound from the library, or you can click on the microphone to record a sound. So we're ready to get started. I'm on my St. Helens tack. And I, if I click on the scripts menu, I'm going to start adding a script to this pane over here. So every script in Scratch starts with an event. And the event tells this script, when do I run? Do I run when the green flag is clicked, when the program is started? Do I run when my end user presses a, a key, like the space key? Do I run when someone clicks on this sprite? And that's the one I'm going to choose for this project because I want my script to run when my end user clicks on my tack. So I'm going to drag over here with my mouse when this sprite is clicked. The next thing I'm going to do is 
I'm going to start adding logic to make my tack switch its costume. So I'm going to go to the looks menu and I'm going to say switch to costume and I'm going to leave the default choice here as volcano. Because remember I have two costumes. I have a tack and I have a volcano costume. And if you forgot where they are, they're here, tack and volcano. So I'm, when the sprite is clicked, it's going to switch to costume volcano. The next thing under the looks menu is it's going to set its size to zero, which is going to make it virtually disappear. So I'm going to pick it from here. It says 100, but then I'm going to change that to a zero with my keyboard. The next thing I need is from the control menu. So I'm going to click on control and then I'm going to add a repeat block drag it over here and what a repeat block does is in programming we would call this a loop and anything you put inside the repeat block is going to execute or run over and over so what I want my volcano to do is get bigger and bigger and bigger and I'll do that under the looks menu I'm going to change size by 10 the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to say a fact so I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to say, say, and you put in your St. Helens fact. And I think your reader needs at least 10 seconds to read your fact. So change this value to 10. Make sure, of course, to put your fact uh, in this box right here. The next thing I'm going to do is click on Control and put another repeat in because I want my volcano to shrink back down to size. And I'll do that under the looks menu again. And I'm going to say change size by, but this time I'm going to put in negative 10. And a negative is just using the dash on your keyboard. It's right next to your zero key. The next thing I'm going to do is switch my costume back to tack. And the last thing I'll do is set the size to 100% because I want my tack to be the size that it is right now because that's just about perfect. So that completes this script. So if I click on this header, it will run just this script. If I want to run all the scripts in my program, I could click on the green flag. For now, I only have one script, so I'm going to click right here. So there's my volcano. It zoomed up nice and big. It's giving me 10 seconds to read about my fact, and then it's going to shrink back down to size and turn back into a tack. So the next thing I'm going to do, so I don't have to write all that code again, is a little trick if you drag this with your mouse very carefully and drop it on the other tacks. I'll do it on Kilauea and then I'll do it again on Kilimanjaro and then one more on Vesuvius. What that did is it copied this whole script that I just wrote to the rest of my tacks. If I click on Kilauea, there it is. And I click on Kilimanjaro, there it is again, and Vesuvius. The only thing I need to do now is to change my fact because I don't want a St. Helens fact when I click on Kilauea. I want a Kilauea fact. So repeat that for the rest of your scripts. Go to Kilimanjaro, put in your Kilimanjaro fact, and then click on Vesuvius and put in your Vesuvius fact. And to try it, I can click the green flag and click on each of these tacks. If I click on the red one, I see a St. Helens fact. If I click on, I can't get to that one. The other one, I get the Vesuvius fact. So it looks like they're, they're working. Click on the orange one now that I can see it, and I see a Kilauea fact. And as soon as this one shrinks down, I'll be able to try the last one which is our green Kilimanjaro tack.
So now I know all my tags are working. The last thing I have to do is just put the tax in the right place on the map. Hopefully you know where these tax go. And if you do, you should pause the video and go ahead and put them in the correct place. If you don't know where they should go, I'm going to show you. The St. Helens tax goes right up about here. My Kilauea tax, this little spot right here is Hawaii. My green tack is Kilimanjaro, it's going to go right there, and my blue tack is going to go right here in Italy. So now I'm going to choose File, Save Now. If you don't see Save Now, you probably forgot to remix or sign in and you should ask someone for help. But if you see Save Now, you should be up all set. So if I click on the green flag, this should work great. So there's my Kilauea, St. Helens, Vesuvius, and Kilimanjaro. And in a few seconds, they're all going to shrink back down to size. If you've finished this much of the project, you've done a great job. If you have time left in class, you can try to challenge yourself and see if you can make the tax change color or change size in some way and uh, to do that you're going to have to add another script. I'll just get you started and see if you can figure it out. Click on events, choose when the green flag is clicked because you want it to blink the entire time the program is running as soon as they start your program and you're going to put a forever loop in there. Anything you put inside forever is going to make this task, this, this, um, task, whatever it is, repeat over and over the entire time the program is running until your end user hits the red stop sign. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out from the looks menu what might make your tack change color or, or size either way. That, those are two great ways to make it blink. And in between, you're going to want to add a weight in there so that it gets a little bigger and then weights a little bit and then gets smaller and weights a little bit. Or you can make it change color and weight, change color back and then weight. And that will give it the, uh, it'll make it look like it's blinking. So try that and see if you can get it. And if you can't, I'll show you the, the answer in just a minute. So hopefully you figured out how to make it blink in some way. And like I said, there are several ways to do it. If you didn't, I'll show you one way to do it. I'm going to go under the looks menu and I'm going to see where it says change color effect by 25. I'm going to add that in. Um, I'm also going to add in um, clear graphic effects, which just sets this tack back to looking exactly like it did when I started. Then I'm going to go to the control menu and in between these two I'm going to say wait a little bit because if you change the color and then erase it right away nobody will see what you've just done. So I'm going to make it go for 0.5 seconds and you can just type that in there um, with your period and then the number five. I'll do it again with this one And what that'll do is change the color, wait a half a second, change it back, wait a half a second, and repeat forever or until I stop my program. So if I click on this, let's see how it looks. So there it goes, it's blinking. Another thing you could do is you could change these other effects and experiment and see if you like that, if you like that it gets um, kind of expanded. You can try a whirl, it makes it look like it's doing a little dance. You can pixelate it, maybe you like that one. But anyway, experiment with these different choices. Pick the one that you like, and when you get it working just the way you want it, I'm going to stop this, you can just click it and drag it 
onto your other sprites. Or to be fun, you could make every single tack blink a different way by going to each script and changing what you chose here, what effect you wanted them to have. A last thing that you could do would be to add a song or a sound. You can either add a sound to your stage or that plays the entire time your program is running, or you can go to your sprites and you can have them make a sound. And I'm gonna leave that challenge up to you. But the way you would do that would be to add a sound from the library, and then in your script, um, under the sound menu, add a little thing in here. I'll just leave the pop sound. And drag it somewhere into your script. It almost doesn't matter where it goes, but you want it maybe before the, the fact appears. So it'll pop before they see the fact. I'll just show you how that works. Did you hear the pop? And you can pick any sound that you want. Uh, I'd pick a short sound, not a long music loop because that will take a long time to play. In any case, I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. I hope you it inspires you to try computer programming and to explore the other projects that are on the Scratch website. Hope you enjoyed it.